Hello, my beautiful collective. Oh, welcome to Baby Steps Tarot, Esoteric, and Astrology. So glad to have you back. If you are a returning subscriber or viewer, if you are new, welcome, welcome, welcome to the channel. Uh, so excited to just have some fresh energy. I've been a little stagnant as uh, a lot of other readers have been. It's just been a it's tough. It's we've been getting like this red light, green light, like go, stop, go, stop, push, go, because we go through things and then all of a sudden we process and then the collective processes processes and we can't like really tap into energies because there's so many changing timelines, right? So many things are happening. All of these towers are coming down. Lots of foundations, shaky foundations are coming down. And so it's not even there is no point since we are absorbing the, uh, the the energy of the collective. There's no point in us putting ourselves out there doing readings when something can drop on a dime because this is like free will. But people are getting pushed, right? People are getting corralled. People are getting karma. People are starting to see that maybe there's something outside of them, like they believe in God or they believe in the universe. They believe in spirit guides or whatever. But they're now starting to see things manifest either their own thoughts or their own fears or their own questions or their own actions mirrored back to them. There's a lot of awareness and there's a lot, there's a lot of people. I feel like it's this huge, massive wave of, um, of a spiritual awakening. I definitely feel like there is this huge. Yeah. And I keep, I've been getting this, um, this vision of waves crashing on the beach and I didn't understand it. And then all of a sudden Dolores Cannon popped up and I don't know if any of you have been exposed to her and, you know, regardless of what you believe or not, I think anybody's point experience is valid and we can learn something from it. And she talks about the three waves of volunteers about the types of people. And I honestly, to be perfectly honest with you, I've learned most of this information and listened to other readers. I've gone, I have tried to watch that video. It's like 45 minutes long. And I've tried to watch it like 18 times and I've gotten bits and pieces. I haven't listened to it all the way through. Pardon the mic. But I do know enough about it to know that like I think that's what the crashing momentum is right now is that we have a huge, huge. And I feel like the people that are really, really drawn to me, I may not be blowing up. I may not be consistent. But what I do know is that I have a very high caliber. And here's the thing is if you're drawn to these readings and you have no idea even what like seeing angel numbers are, whatever it is, if you're just on baby steps of like, because I feel there's a there's a huge, this is what I'm talking about because I keep seeing like black and I want to say shoal. It's spelled S-H-O-A-L. Um, but it, it looks like it's like black crystals. It almost feels like I can feel it in my hands like it's, um, charcoal like when you burn a fire down and then you get those bits and they're like they look like bark it looks like black bark or maybe it is bark if you're burning wood but um there's just this and it pieces off and you can use it for like eyeliner or marking things or whatever but i just keep getting that like crashing on a beach over and over and over and i just keep thinking like dark night of the soul like there is this huge momentum in my collective because i know i'm a catalyst energy so I know the people that I have been involved with in this past karmic cycle, right, since the last Saturn retrograde are now, you know, people we are put into each other's lives so that the universe like tests you and says, hey, how is the, you know, how are you going to, okay, you say that you don't want this type of relationship. Well, I'm going to put, I'm going to put somebody different in front of you and then see how you react because you probably have not healed from what caused you to be in these relationships in the first place. And so I have found in my experience and I think other light workers and other healers and intuitives and psychics and such, we come to people's lives and, you know, it's like Jesus coming into the temple and like flipping tables. And I am not comparing any of us to Jesus Christ himself. I'm a follower of him and I'm very, very fond of him. And I'm very, uh, you know, I try and tap into the Christ consciousness, not the Bible. Because the Bible is man-made, right? It may have been inspired, but it's it's been ma manipulated by man, right? But if you can tap into the Christ consciousness, you know that that vibration where it's just pure Jesus, like Jesus love, like <laughs> the humility of that man, and and so many people call themselves, you know, followers. They say Christian, you know, 
and and they they emulate they they go to these buildings on a certain day but they live their lives and they treat their people over and over and over in the name of a man that did not tolerate and the man that got murdered before he had a chance to live right because he had the audacity to tell the people the actual pharisees that were in the church collecting the money collecting the clout collecting the the social capital right of what happens in these mega churches and all of these people like the sheep all and i am not anti again i am a fan of the man and and if you want to come at me with some type of like you have no idea my education when it comes to like religious studies and my interests and and where i have a lot of knowledge in so this isn't something where i'm just spouting off like i was raised in the church and and i learned more about the church and christianity and religious studies than I did ever before. That's way after I left the house and it had it shoved down my throat, some certain doctrine. So again, if you want to come at me, you can in the comments, I'm just going to block you. I'm not going to write because I, I can feel a lot of like people getting stirred up right now. So calm, calm your T-I-T-S. Ooh, I've got some Sal coming through right here. Yeah, I've got some, I've never said that. I am only, I'm like, am I offended by myself? No, I feel like I've got some really like misogynistic <laughs> mofos like watching me and like throwing that. And it doesn't have to be actual plumbing male. It could be women that have been raised in this site. But like, yeah, I, I feel like people just want to, I feel like this is how they, the way they feel about me is the way they feel about you. They want to slap your mouth. People want to like shove soap in your mouth right now. It's the gossip on you is that there's a lot of people that you're pissing off. So let's get into it. Woo. All right. Where are we at? So we're going to have to put a, a label on this one. That's a long channeling in the beginning. All right. Let's see here. Oh, and if you've got a problem with that word, you can also click off. You want to get like really freaked out by like a channeler? Go check out Abby Normal, right? Like channeling is just flow. It's like a basketball player just getting his game on. And everybody's like, oh, he was on his game. It's called being in flow. It's an actual brain state. So when you have an issue with like how I talk or how I look or how I touch my hair, all these things, because there's so many people that are watching right now that are so freaking irritated with all of the, and I'm just like, really? Like that's what you're taking away? Go get your own channel. Unsubscribe from mine. I'm over it. Woo! Pile number one. I feel like we just stepped into your, stepped into your energy. <laughs> so clear, so succinct, and I'm getting all like fuzzy and for, oh, I feel like this is the way people are around you. I feel like, ooh, yeah, because you, you saw how that came out. Yeah, I feel like people have to feel like they have to like, Primp and preen and like before they step into your energy. Yeah, there's this very uh, come correct or don't come at all energy. I like you, pile one. Very nice. Oh, I didn't do a pile selection. I'm going to stick. All right, for you, pile selection NAZIs out there. Um, but to be fair, I didn't do a pile selection. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to tag it in here. Pile number one. Amethyst. We might get just pile number one, amethyst. Pile number two, lapis lazuli. Pile number two, lapis lazuli. Pile number three, <laughs> fool's gold. I can't remember the fool's gold though. And then pile number four, Black tourmaline. Black tourmaline. All right. I'll remember at the 10 mark. I, I apologize. I know. Just I'm just like. Okay. Now, back to the uh, pile number one. Let's do this. And I feel like I just, yeah. I, I, yeah, I feel like you're under a lot of judgment. And you feel like people are just watching you. I feel like you're just trying to um fuzz everything out you might be just a lot of self-care but i feel like a lot of like insulation 
you might be realizing, I was just having this conversation with someone in, in my life that realizes like how much of an HSP, like a highly sensitive person they are. And like the little things that you can do just by like isolation or like, you know, making terms where people have to make an appointment with you instead of just walking to your office, like all of these little things that you can do to manage your executive uh, order function. And that's something that I'm learning about with ADHD. I've always known it. I just didn't have a word for it. And I don't know. I think I might be butchering it. But let's get a uh, pile number one. Yeah, I feel like you're laying low. I feel like you're tired. I'm tired. I can, and it's not me. I've actually really been, really have been prioritizing sleep and rest. And I'm still feeling like I, I've also been exercising a lot, though. But I just, I feel like this, um, it's the feeling that I used to have when I uh, shot a wedding. I was a professional photographer. And I did weddings for a while. And they were just, I mean, it was Friday night rehearsal. It was before that, the week, you know, you would have the bridal. I mean, all of these things leading up to the wedding and then the rehearsal and then, bam, eight hours at the wedding and then the reception and all of the different, like, and then, you know, sometimes the brunches and the afternoon, like, possible baby shower that somebody might have. I mean, it was just, and I'd be wrecked for, like, a week physically. Couldn't get out of bed because, I mean, just, okay. That flipped out. I feel like, yeah, you're just in this. <laughs> Even the card flipped out slowly. Uh, yeah, you're not putting yourself in any box. What's the gossip on you? You have decided. I have fully, fully. You might have just come out of the spiritual closet or something that's a little more like for me. Um, I was really like not interested in witchcraft. It's always something that I've had a huge respect and and, and fear of. Um, it's not something that even when I got like people are like, oh, and I'm like, well, you know, I do tarot. And they're like, oh, you're a witch. And I'm like, no, I'm a psychic medium. And they're like, oh, you talked to, yeah. and it's like all of this, like, I'm going to put you in this box. I want to put you in this box, in this box. And I've just been, and I feel like you, you know, the gossip really on you is like, you have fully decided to color outside of the lines. You have fully decided to say, go screw your box. You have fully decided to like, not even tell anybody you stepped out of the box. I feel that you are outside of the box and people are like, where did they go? How did they do that? I feel like people feel like, feel like you pulled like a magic trick on them. Oh, now I'm really getting, okay. Now you make me want to put my glasses on. You might have a Virgo. Take that as confirmation. What just fell? Fool's goal. You might want to check out pile number three or whatever fool's gold is. I don't remember. We'll have to check into that. Make sure we are all clipped in. Oh my goodness. Why is everything falling on the floor? Everything's falling on the floor. People, oh, people are shook. People are falling. Yeah. People are, I'm getting like, oh, now I'm getting this really weird. Somebody might be from Wisconsin. I'm just getting cow tipping. I'm getting like these cows that were just sitting there like grazing, chewing their cud, like super, super comfortable in their life. And you came by and like tipped them over. <laughs> if nobody knows anything about cow tipping, you should go check it out. I definitely feel, I feel like you have gone and just pushed people's boundaries, right? We talk about boxes, their ideas of maybe what you do or who you be or how you roll or how you stick to your guns or there is something here where people are like, and you're unattainable. And I don't feel like it's like you're, you're more like you're better than anybody or anything like that. I just feel like you've done a lot of healing and you have decided to completely excise yourself out of any possible scenarios that might uh, I'm just getting like this, like mitigate or like have any, like, I feel like you don't want anybody's influence on your decisions. And you realize, you know, here is where this is the empath, right? That has either gone dark or gone right. 
this is empath gone right. Like not playing the victim game, but not using their empathy to manipulate other person people. This is a person that has full control of their empathic abilities. They have full control of their emotions. They have full control of their immediate surroundings and the people that are in it or that reflect. This is a person that has taken full control and not in like a hyper because people are like, well, they're hyper independent and that's a show, show of trauma. Well, yeah, if you've had a lot of trauma and like, the people that are upset about you putting the boundaries are the people that you needed to have the boundaries most up in the first place with. If that makes any sense, I'm not going to try and read because it's kind of the people. Okay, let's say it one more time. So the people that are like, oh my gosh, well, I mean, we always hang out on Wednesday night and you're like, well, I'm not going to or whatever it is that like, I'm not going to be there for family this or I'm not coming or just anybody that gets upset with you saying no and living your own life is a person that needs, was the person that needed to have those boundaries in the first place. And they're gonna be, so the ones that are most, the other people that are like, oh my gosh, you know, it's really, it's, you know, you work so hard and you really need to take time to yourself. And I totally understand it. I will ch catch you and I know you've been going through a lot. Or the person that's like, how dare you? Didn't you, don't you know how much this dinner means to me? Does it, you know what I mean? That's the type of people that are just like, I think you have just identified the manipulators and you've cut them all out and they have no access to you. Do you see we're like six minutes in and it's just like people are pressed. I might put a grilled cheese sandwich and my call is why are they so pressed gossip read that might be because I haven't been resonating with a lot of the tea glasses like just I, I like making my own thumbnails. And I feel like that's the thing is like people are so like they, uh, they it's not even the usual pressed, like the usual gossip or the usual jealousy or the usual energy. These are people that have been plotting and scheming and they see you pulling away from them and they don't know how because you're not telling them anything. Right. You're moving in silence right they can't anticipate anything you have completely like and you might just you might live with them you might actually live in the house with them but you may have learned watching videos about gray rocking right and not giving them any information there's something here where people cannot you're not giving them enough information for them to be able to use it against you and so they're like well where's my weapon they don't have a weapon if you don't give it to them and you're not giving it to them you said no Maz. You, you don't even say, I'm going to get mad at you. You're like, I just don't care anymore, right? People are like, oh, here's the problem. I'd rather you hate me than be indifferent. And like, mm, maybe I will go over to, you know what I mean? Like someone that doesn't know how they feel about you, I'd rather you punch me in the face than go and talk behind my back, right? That's the bigger betrayal. At least I can, I can confront, we can have a conversation or we can have some type of whatever. If you just can't stand me and you can talk to me and face to face, tell me what's going on. And we're just like, okay, we just don't agree. And that's, we don't have to hit each other, right? This isn't like housewives of Atlanta kind of crazy stuff. Like this is just this normal adult saying, you know what? Like, I don't agree with that. And I feel a different way about it. And I'm not going to try and convince you of how I feel about it, but I am going to state how I feel. And I think this is where we part ways. Like that's a normal adult conversation, right? But people can't go there. They don't know how to. They've been raised on the housewives of Atlanta. No, again, I'm just saying, right? Like people that have been like, watching Jersey Shore since they've been two years old with a pacifier in their mouth because their mother or their parents put them in front of a TV instead of giving them love. And so all they think is that love and relationships and everything is transactional and bougie as all get, like all of these things. that And, and I, I've, I've taken years to deprogram myself with this crap I had to go through, right? And I'm still struggling with a lot of things that a lot of people are just like so much more free about. You know, so like we all have our struggles and I feel like that's just where you're at right now. Like I just, yeah, I feel like you're doing a lot of shadow. All I'm doing is spouting shadow work. This is why you are unbothered. It has nothing to do with like, oh, screw you and that you just have a bigger willpower or, or, or vendetta against these people. You're just like, I said, it's not that I don't care. I just don't care enough to let it affect my future. What are you doing other than like, spewing whatever like what what is that going to do what is me focusing on that thing all i'm going to do is i'm going to take that energy that you're putting at me and i could be like oh evil eye and back to you and this that and the other and sometimes there's times that you have to do that but i find better is to bind 
that and then say, okay, and I learned this from like the first like real life person and it's unfortunate that we're no longer and I don't know why and I got ghosted and I just, you know, that happens all the time and I understand it. But if you're watching, um, I'm going to give you credit for this because it's the first person that like showed me how to make a candle and put intentions into it and like just showed me like how strong like you, you, you know, ethical magic, right? And how strong of a, like they gave me the, the, the ingredients and said, hey, this is how you do it, but you do it yourself so you can see with the power inside of you. And it was so liberating, right? And, and it's something that I have been, and so yeah, no, you are, I just, you see it's all of this inner work and I'm just gonna keep going with this. We're gonna get some tarot here, but the gossip on you, I just feel like, I feel like this is you talking to the people that have been gossiping about you and saying like, it has nothing to do with you. You are so involved with yourselves and this, it has not, I am not, I feel like there's this, this rift that people think that you think that they're better than you're they're, because they are addicted to attention. And they have a hard time being alone with themselves. And I'm the person that had two years of insomnia, like straight, and developed two autoimmune diseases from not being able to sleep properly for two years while going through like some pretty horrendous stuff that I choose not to share and I choose not to wallow in and I choose to forgive myself and I choose to forgive the other people and because it does me no good. What it does do though is give me a backbone of steel. And that's what people, because I choose to still love and choose to open up my inner child, because I did that with people and then I would get so mad and angry and bitter and I would have all of these grudges and I was just like, they say like vengeance or whatever, like vengeance, something about taking poison and taking poison and you're eating the poison instead of the person that you're trying to poison. Anyways, all of that. Like once you let go of that, like yeah, it's it's easy to like I can see things coming from a mile away, and it's not just some clairvoyant. It's just like I people are so pedestrian with their attempts to manipulate. And I was raised by the some of now that I understand now that I'm old enough, I'm like some pretty spectacular in their own right, um, grandiose narcissistic manipulators. And so I learned to tiptoe and tap dance and eggshell and all that other stuff. And then I attracted that my entire life. My, my relationships, my friendships, my marriages, my marriage. Um, I mean, in-laws, everybody, right? Because I was the supply. And I was. I was the people-pleasing su supply. And now people can't stand me because I refuse to be their supply. And I call them out on it. And this isn't just, you know, you know, you know who you are. People are just uncomfortable. Everybody wants to hide and put everything. I am no longer. I got so sick. You, when you don't have your health, and I'm talking about for years upon years upon years upon like a decade, when you don't have your health, nothing else matters. Nobody's going to get in my way because I got my health back. And the reason why I got my health back is because I stopped exposing myself to manipulative narcissists, mother people that I didn't have the ability to speak out against. And so I internalized it and it internalized into sicknesses, like really, really dark, sophisticated type of energies that were meant to make me try and end my life myself, right? That is the curse of my family. That's the generational curse that year 44 brings me. What generational curse are you breaking? Because I feel it. It's here. It's all over this reading. What gener That's the question. Pile I mean, we, we, we just rolled into this one. There's another. Uh, I'll, okay, that's a, a heads up. I've got a reading coming for you. You're going to like the thumbnail. The Muse of Materials, the King of Materials in reverse. What are you doing? You. This is the establishment. Right. This is everybody like 
you need to have a paycheck, you need to have a law degree, you need to have a this, you need to have a husband, you need to have a child, you need to have all of these things. You are bucking convention. And you said, you, you, you know, right, this, this bridge, you're like, I'm going to walk this bridge. Look at this. I am going to walk this bridge all by myself with you trying to give me an illusion that there's a blockage here, right? Pardon me. Put your legs, maybe even spread your legs open for me. Try and try and tempt me with sex or food or money or whatever it is. And I'm going to walk past all of this to my happy, beautiful, super sunshine Maui in the background, kind of while you try and do your little song and dance for me and maybe take your clothes off for me, all of this beautiful thing, trying to like not to try and make sure that I don't go on my own way, right? Because they know that wherever you are going, they can't come with. It's very clear to them. So the only way that they feel that they can, can they just want to drag you down. It's crabs in the bucket. Every single reading it comes in. Crabs in the bucket. If I can't make it there because I'm not, I, I don't, they, they, I think people that have been around you realize that they are just not, and it's not, this is something that it's not like, oh, you just, this is something you've developed and cultivated over a lifetime. And now people are just trying to catch up right? Because all, you made them feel some type of way because you disrupted the status quo. You stepped out of, you know, wherever you came from and disrupted and they realized that they're actually in a matrix, right? And the things that are being pumped into them and the things that they listen to and the people that they surround themselves, everything that they do, people are realizing that they are creating their own reality and it scares the shit out of them because they don't know how to fix it. And they resent you for knowing how to do it and doing it yourself and not giving them like this golden Willy Wonka ticket. Right? They don't, they have no idea. They have no idea. When we say, oh, you've done the healing, like you've been sitting in a corner sucking your thumb, right? Like working a worry stone or something like that. No, you went through the divorces and you went through the, 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 the deaths and you went through the, the homelessness and you went through the like negative cash pour, like you went through all of the things and you didn't complain. You just put your trust in the universe and you didn't show that to anybody. Right. And so people are just, they feel like robbed of like seeing you being down. That's what I, I feel like these people really get a really big rise out of like, they, there's this savior complex where they want to help somebody and feel like they're the person that like gives you a hand up or gives you the right introduction or gives you the paycheck in your hand or gives you the whatever it is or gives you the status or gives you the looks when you walk out when you've got this person on your arm, right? It's all this egoic crap that people put their faith in, but then something like the pandemic happens and what do you know? Suicide rates go through the roots because why? People can't go see the people that gave them validation about themselves. Now they're stuck with the person that they've been dicking around and fucking around with on for fucking 10 years. Somebody's coming through. I'm getting like, I just heard uh, the United, the first wives club. I've got, I've got some, some feminines here that are around probably my age that know exactly what I'm talking about. And you've decided to take life in your own hands. You've decided to take your future and say, I'm not going to put it in anybody else's hands. And if it looks different, how I create my empire just because I'm not doing a nine to five and I am using my God given abilities, my goodness, I'm a freaking five clear activated freaking psychic. Hell yeah. I'm going to monetize it. And so should you. Right. All the people that are so scared and want to call witch and this, all the bruja, all of you beautiful, beautiful, intellectual, psychic, emotional, empath, intuitive, all of you, my Wiccans, my Wicca, everybody in this community, you are welcome here if you step in the light of love and acceptance and, and everything. But if you don't, then you're not welcome here. And I feel like this is where people are really, this is, this is the gossip. It's like, here we go. Mission statement. 
Number one, and I get this from Adelina Bond, if it's not a hell yes, it's a hell no. And people are realizing that you're not just like a, mm, maybe. Black and white. There is no gray with you. And there is actually a lot of gray with you, right? You are compassionate. You're just like, I understand. I this, that, and the other. But when people cry, I think you give people a lot, a lot, a lot of, of chances over and over again. I feel like you spell it out for them. I don't feel like you're like this person that's hiding and like making these secret like type of like quiz scenarios or whatever. Like, oh, are they going to cheat on me? Or you know what I mean? I'm going to send somebody in there to hit on them. Like, I don't feel like this person's doing that. Or, or that you've done that or anything like that. I feel that you have just allowed people to show themselves to you through time. That this, you have dealt with the love bombing, right? This is the narcissist empath. You know, and I tell people, and it's so funny because I tell the people that I, I basically pinpoint as a narcissist, like in the first five minutes, I mean, it can get real. When you got the nine traits down pat and you've lived with them and you've married them and you've nurtured them, and you've studied with them and you've worked with them and you've trained them and everything like that. Like you can start, like when you start just realizing that like there's just that many or people that are, you know, there's a spectrum, right? There's the, the spectrum of, you know, Asperger's where nobody can. And then there's the like multi, you know, there's, there's a, I'm just using that. Like there's a really big spectrum where there's someone where you can actually like have a full fledged conversation with, and it may be a little off or whatever, but they've got going on or people that are completely, you know, these beautiful star children that are in their head and doing all these beautiful things in their head, but they're not able to communicate to us. And there's a reason why they're here for us as well. Right. So yeah, I feel that there's this starting to get like really big mental health vibes. I feel like I'm talking to a person that has really struggled with mental health. And I think this is might this might be a person that's realizing like the core roots of those mental health issues. And I also feeling like this is a person that's starting to realize that they can actually cure them themselves. This is a person that has done the work. This is a person that has, but it's been a gradual. It's not like, oh, I'm going to go turkey, go cold turkey. This is a person that has dealt with their addictions through their, yeah, take that as confirmation, through their, they're willing to work through their trauma. And when you release the trauma, weight is trauma, addictions are trauma, food, trauma, drugs, trauma, sex, trauma. It's all the things. If we have to put a Band-Aid, if we feel like something goes wrong and then all of a sudden we need something, that's the core root of what we need to fix. And if you just keep doing it over and over again, Right. I mean, it's, it's just like literally like losing weight. Take the fork out of your mouth. It's literally math. Calories in, calories out. You can have the thyroid. You can have this, that, and the other. It's calories in, calories out, and the type of calories you're consuming. Math. Simple, basic type of, oh, my karma, this, that, and the other. Yeah, you've got to think about how you treat somebody today because you don't want it next year, and it's difficult to think about next year because all you think about is tonight. That's when you have a broader vision. That's when you're more spiritually aware. That's when you're able to get outside of yourself. And then when you're able to get that outside of your family. And then you'll be able to get outside of the religious group or, or organization that you've involved yourself. And then you get your outside your, your, yourself outside of the county. And then you get yourself outside of the state. And then you get yourself outside of the country. And then you get yourself outside of the continent. And then you get yourself outside, right? And then maybe you go to space this higher perspective than person that has never left their freaking zip code for more than a trip, like with a fun person, you know what I mean? Like that nobody that has dared to get out and, and do something other than what they've been told to do. Don't tell me that you know more about anything in life. Don't come at me and don't get angry at me because I decided to take a freaking risk. And yeah, I have slept in cars and under, I have, I have, and so, yeah, rich in stories and rich in a lot of things, but people have this, I feel like you are the energy in the room that people cannot stand because what they do know is that if they went through what they went, because people can feel it, right? People can feel it. That if they went through what you went through, they wouldn't be, they would be, they've gone through less than what you have and look how bitter they are. Right, you show a mirror right up to other people and say, "Yeah," and you don't even talk. 
people sense it off of you. I don't feel like you go, you are not a person that spouts your information off. I mean, this is just, I am channeling a person that is like, I am by myself and I am perfectly comfortable. I don't care about your opinion. I'm not interested, but you please go focus on yourself. There is this enough there is this high, I, this is high priestess, right? There, there is the not, it's not even a magneto helmet. This is like no moss. You, the vault, the vault walls have gone down, like down or up. But I, I, I see it as a down, like you have locked down your energy and it's no longer, I'm going to give you a benefit of doubt. It's like, you better come with something in hand other than just a charming smile and a nice song and dance. And I'm not talking about, oh, I need to get paid. I'm talking about, I know what I bring to the table. You know, this pile, we know as a collective what we bring to the table and we will not accept anything less. Right? Pile number one, I guess pile number one's my, my pile because we are 35 minutes into it and the other ones might be 10 minutes. I don't know. But we're here. I'm here for it. High five. All right. We're done here. Bye.